Hi, new user to Darkroom Booth. Eugene here with Darkroom Software. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for choosing Darkroom Booth. This video will work as a quick start guide or crash course to get you up and running in just a few minutes. We're going to learn how to edit your print template, edit your screen template, add your camera, and add your printer. Let's get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and activate your software with your contact information. And we're going to start off with a, a sample ba basic touchscreen event. We can go ahead and make a duplicate by clicking Create New Event. I'm going to name mine Demo, but you would name it the event name. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and change this template out for a three pose template with a logo and I, I selected this one it's a white background I'll go ahead and remove that text double click on the the photo box and change it to three images and we'll go ahead and change the the proportions to an 8 by 10 proportion click OK and that's just so it fills up the template just a little bit better. I click Add Artwork and browse to my logo graphic that I have on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into place. I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse to resize it. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Save As. And I'm going to add a 1 to the front. And give it a descriptive name. And I added the one just to make it a little bit easier to find. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And because it has that modification with the one, it puts it at the front of the list. Go ahead and click Choose. And it's going to ask me to update the number of photos per session. I'll go ahead and click Yes. Next thing we're going to do is look at the screen template. This is the part of the temp. Uh, this is the part where your customer would interact with on the touch screen. So the template we were looking at earlier was the print template, which would print out. This is what they would interact with. We're going to go ahead and click Edit. And I'm going to change the countdown to orange, just so we can see the difference. And I'm going to change the size to, we'll say 200 to make it real big. And I am going to add one more button for sepia. So I'm going to copy and paste. Go ahead and move this button up here. Change it to the command. This is what happens when you touch the button. We're going to go with sepia. And then click OK. And we're going to change the text. So we've added a new button and changed the text on uh, the color of the text. And we also want to update this preview with three images because we did make that change. So we've updated our screen template while we're at it. Let's go ahead and just change the background color as well. And we'll make it something to match that orange color. Okay, so we're going to click Save As again because we don't want to save over the original so we can always go back to it and I'm going to put that modification of one just so it's easy to find again so next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our camera menu and it's detecting that I have a webcam let's go ahead and turn my digital SLR on and we'll click refresh and it should detect it so now I'm in manual settings, uh, um, so I can adjust these all um, with manual uh, changes. You can also use uh, program. We would suggest either manual or program. Um, if you're not too familiar with using a camera, maybe program is a better option. But if you're using studio lights and you want to stick with manual. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to Live View and just test it out and make sure the camera is working. I have two guys, two friends of mine sitting in. Everything looks good there, a good exposure. So, next thing we'll do is switch over to Global Settings. And the difference with Global Settings versus the other settings, these are settings that are applied to the whole the software as a whole. The settings we were uh, adjusting earlier were event settings specific to that event. So you can set up multiple events all with different settings. We'll go ahead and click Add Printer. And I have a DS40 uh, attached. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And uh, click Add Printer. And because it was just connected, it doesn't see the printer right away. We'll go ahead and click Refresh List. And now it sees that I have 4x6 media. If you don't, uh, if your printer does not show up on this list, you can scroll down to the bottom and select Windows Printers or Windows Printer, and click Add Printer, and your printer should show up if it's been added uh, to Windows. We'll go ahead and click Cancel, Cancel. So let's go ahead and click Back to Events. We're back in our settings, and we're going to start the booth and the live view should pop up. Let's go ahead and start the, uh, the session in sepia. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and change it to black and white for the second one and color for the third one. Okay, it should send it to print. And it should take just a moment. Okay, I have my two 2x6 two strips. I'm going to click on prints. This is where each of the prints will be saved at the end of the event. Or if you need to do a reprint, you can click right here, click reprint. But at the end of the event, you can select all the images and click copy or burn and save it to a folder or to a flash drive. And you can do the same thing with the original images. They're, uh, they're saved here in, in your photos tab. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you was um, the uh, common issue that new users run into. Uh, when they're using darkroom for the first time they'll select a green screen background and you can see i already have a green screen behind the subjects i'm gonna go ahead and start this and we'll start the booth we'll be able to see the, the two of them i have to adjust the white balance just a little bit so we get a little better knockout but you you can see what happens when I remove this green background, all of a sudden you'll start getting um, weird patterns. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you see through the photo node to the background graphic, that's a green screen template. Uh, and if you do not have a green screen background, you'll want to choose one of the templates that has a gray box around it. Another thing, we have a whole bunch of different options, and I'll try to put a link in the video to help you get started on some of the other options. But it's important to remember to get the foundation first before you start adding multiple options. Because if you run into an issue, it's harder to troubleshoot what caused the issue. So if I were to just go through and check all these options, and any one of them or multiples can be uh, causing a problem so it's a good idea to add each new option one by one and test it thoroughly before you take it out in the field I hope this has been helpful thank you very much for watching and once again thank you for choosing Darkroom Booth